everybody. This is Miss Hardman again. Thank you for joining me today. And we're going to talk a little bit more about art and how you can create uh, using shapes. Last week uh, when we were together, we talked about how you can use a lot of different shapes and we actually made a picture using the shapes. So today, to start off with, I wanted to show you about a very famous artist, Vincent Van Gogh. You don't have to know how to spell his name or anything. We just call him Van Gogh, um, who lived a long time ago, and he was born in 1850, and um, he didn't live very long. He was in his 40s when he passed away. But he, during his lifetime, he created uh, hundreds of artworks, and we're just so fortunate that we have uh, a lot of his works that have survived him, and he's worldwide um, known worldwide. His works are in museums all over the world, and if you tried to buy one of his artworks, it would cost millions of dollars. Here's the sad part. During his whole life, he did not sell a single picture. He, d he was pretty unhappy in his life. His father was a minister, and his mother painted with watercolors. She kind of dabbled in paint. So at first, Vincent Van Gogh started off as a minister, but he didn't really do very well as a minister. And he sort of evolved into uh, becoming a painter, something he had always loved doing. And um, he just, he kept working at it and working at it, but he never could sell any of his works. So that kind of made him unhappy. Luckily for him, he had an older brother named Theo who, um, sent him money so that he could buy canvases and, and oils for him to paint with. Now I want to show you some of Vincent Van Gogh's works to show you how he used bright colors. And this is wonderful because they just make, the bright colors make us feel so good when we look at them. They're so beautiful. But also he used a lot of shapes. So let's look at his works real quickly. This first one um, is about an outdoor cafe. And you can see that there's a starry night. He loves starry nights. Some of his other pictures are, you know, use the Starry Nights as well. The cafe is all lit up, and you can see the seats right here, and you can see that these are elliptical shapes. He has rectangles that he used here for the chairs, for the windows, for the windows of these buildings. And um, over here, if you look at the inside of his bedroom, another picture that he made, uh, a lot of shapes. The chair, the table, another chair, the window triangles here on this cloth that's hanging down from the door. Uh, look at his bed, nice rectangles, vertical lines, and some rectangles over here, and squares for the pictures on the wall. Um, if you look at this picture, it's an outdoor picture, and it shows a field, uh, different fields actually. He's kind of gotten them divided up, I guess, according to whatever was growing in the fields. Uh, some darker colors here, some curly, curvy lines, and some real bright colors over here in this field. So rectangles, rectangles, curvy shapes, rectangles, rectangles. And over here, you can see another outdoor scene that um, Vincent Van Gogh used uh, or painted. And you can see again that he used rectangles and triangles uh, on the houses here. Um, sort of some curvy shapes in the background for the trees. And um, you can see vertical lines off in the distance for the water, and um, some rectangles right here at the gate. So beautiful, bright colors. I just wanted you to know about him because he is a famous artist, and you're an artist too, so you'll be using some of the same shapes that Vincent Van Gogh used. So let's look over here again. I'm gonna walk over here and show you the shapes that we talked about last time we were together. Last time we talked about a circle, the round circle that we use a lot in our artwork. And if you stretch it out on the ends, you can make an oval shape right here. If you stretch out the oval shape on the ends, you can make an ellipse. Remember I said you can remember that word because it has lips in the middle of the word, ellipse. Now, I forgot to mention last week that if you just take a little section of the circle right here, you can make a moon shape. Sometimes people call that a crescent shape. And if you cut the circle in half, we did talk about this, 
it's called a half circle. Half here and half there. Now, shapes that have corners, um, the corners are called angles, and um, we use those a lot, as well as um, many artists, famous artists, classroom artists, artists just like you, use these shapes that have corners or angles. The first one we talked about was a square where all four sides are equal. They're all exact same all the way around. That's a square. But if you stretch out the square on the ends, you can make this shape, pull the sides out longer, and you still have four sides, but the sides are not all equal. This is called a rectangle. Remember, I said angle means corner. So these shapes have corners. Now, if you cut the corners off of, or divide the square in half, or cut the corners off of the rectangles or squares, you can get a triangle, which is a shape that has three sides. And remember, we said that tri, right here, means three, just like the three wheels on a tricycle. And sometimes we use shapes that have curves or rounded parts on the top, but an angle on the bottom, like this nice heart shape that you see a lot of times when people uh, use those uh, shapes for decorations or for building their pictures. And finally, a shape that we did not talk about at all. This is an organic shape. And this is a shape that you see a lot in nature, because a lot of times things in nature don't have a definite shape. They don't fit nicely in as triangles or rectangles or squares or even circles, but they just have sort of a shape that's, you know, kind of hard to describe or define. We call it an organic shape. I like to think of it as a puzzle shape. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a, a, a quick picture using some of those shapes. And um, I want you to look at these pictures for a moment while I take these um, pictures of Vincent Van Gogh's down, and then we'll draw our picture right over here. A little noisy, but we're just going to take this right down so we can use this side of the board. And I'll put this right over here. Now, I want to use this, um, let's see, maybe I will draw my outline of my paper. And you just need um, a piece of paper, pencils or crayons, or um, you might need, um, or, or you could use colored pencils or even markers for this. Later, if you want to color it in, you can, or you can um, use markers to color it in, or watercolors. You may have a watercolor set that you can use, or even paint, but we're just going to draw it today. The first thing I want you to think about on this paper, that my paper is the board and, and your paper, of course, is we're going to make a letter Y. We're going to start in one corner at the top, and we're going to make another letter Y, or another line that goes up and comes down to meet it. And it's not a real straight letter Y. And um, we're going to, and you can see it's got some squiggle lines in it. That's okay. It's not a perfect letter Y. We're going to actually, at the bottom of this letter Y, we're going to make this part of it look kind of like a letter L, and then we're going to go back up with our pencil or crayon towards the middle. Doesn't have to be real straight, and then we're going to go all the way back out to the end where it's a point. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, it still looks like a letter Y, but we're going to make it look a little bit more like um, something that we might see in nature. So, I'm going to go back over it with, real quickly with my brown. And maybe that should give you a little bit of a hint 
about where we're going with our letter Y. All right, now what I want to do is I want to make um, this part of my Y shape have another extension coming out here and go back to the trunk of the tree. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, before we go any further, I want you to think about this. I want you to use those letter Ys to draw a lot of other letter Ys on here for some smaller little limbs and branches on our tree. And some of those can have little branches coming out from them as well. Okay, and you can do that here as well on both sides of these big limbs. Remember I showed you a picture the other day where a lot of the limbs look like triangles or if you fill them in, they would look like triangles or maybe letter Y's. So I'm gonna make a longer one over here and maybe this is starting to look a little bit more like a tree that you might see outside. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, let's see if I can find, oh, here it is. I'm going to, um, on this big limb right here, I'm gonna draw one, I'm gonna start it here, and then I'm gonna curve it around like that. I'm gonna do another one right here. A curved line that starts right there and another curved line over that big branch and then make it straight coming down. And then I'm gonna be thinking about that oval shape right there that we drew earlier. And I'm gonna start an oval right here but I'm gonna make it go to a point. And I'm gonna do another one right here. Wow. Well, let's just skip this for a minute and we're gonna go down here to the um, bottom of our picture because we want to go not underneath this tree but go back behind the tree and draw a horizon line. That's the line where we see the sky meeting the ground. Okay, that's gonna all be our ground underneath here. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and draw some V shapes all back in here, a lot of it real close together and make it really look like grass. And we can do more, I will do more as I go along, but I want you to come back to these little oval shapes right here and I want you to, at the bottom where it's a point, I want you to draw a little circle here, a little circle there, and a little circle there, and a little circle there. And I want you to put a little dot in each one. I'm sorry that my marker's not cooperating really good this time, but there, I got a little dot inside that circle and um, I will come down here to the point and I'm going to I'm going to draw a little triangle right on the end of this. Now this is a pretty simplified version of it but these are going to be, this, these are little opossums. I don't know if you know what an opossum is, but it's a little animal that um, hunts at night. Um, it stays awake, it sleeps during the day, and it hunts during the night. Um, and it's a marsupial. And a marsupial is an animal that carries its babies in a pouch. It's actually the only animal in North America that is a marsupial. And its cousins are uh, the koala bear in Australia and also the kangaroo 
in Australia because those are also marsupials and they carry their babies in a pouch as well. So we're gonna go ahead and draw some little lines on our tree here to make it look more like bark on the tree, maybe a, a knot on the tree, little oval shapes there, and then some more. Now these aren't necessarily straight lines. You can see that I'm adding some lines to make it look more textured and rougher looking and more like real bark. So what I would like for you to do, and I'm gonna put this marker will work, I'm going to add some little whiskers on either. That one did not work, so I'll just use a different one. So some little whiskers on either side right about here. Now we can't see the pouch and we can't see his legs because they're on the other side. So this is, um, and I, you know, I would love for you to go ahead and color in your tree, um, make sure that you have plenty of bark, you know, this is the rough covering of the tree, and I would also love for you to make lots of little grass all in here. If you want to add some flowers in your grass, then be my guest. Do, Ash, you can do lots of things that you might see growing and uh, out here in this field. But I wanted to show you how easy it was when you look in nature and you see some things that are very similar to what you already know. So a tree kind of looking like a Y is something you may not have thought of. Um, opossums looking more like an oval shape is something you may not have thought of. And um, making this, um, you know, these blades of grass down here look like lots of little letter V's. That's something I want you to be aware of too. So think about your shapes and the organic shape that we talked about as well. And um, then, you know, we'll go ahead and um, let that be it for today. And I'll talk to you again about some other things the next time we meet and talk about some more shapes. Thank you for joining me. Bye.